going on guys welcome back i know it's been a little while since i actually made a video for you guys so i'm kind of happy to finally be back and uh give you guys some content i know it's been a little while so what i plan on doing today i plan on showing you guys how to remove the kick panel on the driver's side dash underneath where your legs are just in case you need to get access under there for anything in my case um, I have to get access to the OBD2 port. I actually have to switch out one of the terminal pins. I'm gonna get a little more in depth uh, very shortly, but first, I wanna give you guys a cold start. And second, we gotta go run and get a car wash. So let's do that. to the car wash right now um the reason i'm getting a car wash and really shouldn't have to be a reason to go get a car wash you always keep your car nice and clean but the reason specifically this time is i am more than likely having a photo shoot tomorrow with the car to get some nice content and want the car to be nice squeaky clean i haven't washed it in some time so it's definitely overdue um, for this car she's gonna hopefully look nice and clean by the time we're done but as long as the weather's permitting tomorrow we'll have some good content for you guys so last time i made a video with this car i'm not sure what mods i had or what stage i was um, but a little update on the car. I ended up installing big turbos, basically comparable to TS2 Pluses. It's a full stage four build, has a lot of work done to it. Ended up going with the um, 525 Walbro in tank pump for additional fueling. So a lot of upgrades. Doesn't that just sound, you know, it's it's <laughs> exciting. I know a lot of people don't like the snap and crackle and pop and everything, but you know what? I enjoy it. It gives characteristic to the car. And honestly, you see a lot of manufacturers these days, including it from the factory, including on C7.5s, S7s, RS7s. You know, it's a factory option to have that. to the car wash let's see if they'll take us in all right guys here we are at the car wash as you can see there she is going through uh, getting cleaned up cleaning the mats up a little bit applying some uh, heavy dew cleaner to the wheels try to get some of that brake dust off um, and then she's going to start to go through all these contraptions everyone like to say they're like sandpaper right and uh, they're definitely not the, the greatest for the car but you know as far as quick effective car wash you know not too bad so uh let's go check it out when it gets out on the other side
All right, guys, we made it back to the garage. So now I'm gonna show you guys, like I mentioned earlier, how to disassemble your knee bolster or your kick panel. Not sure really what it's called, but this panel right down there on the driver's side. So you're gonna need two things in order to remove this. One is going to be an eight millimeter socket. There's about three eight millimeter screws that are holding that in. You're also going to need a, really you should have a panel removal tool. I don't know where mine is, so I'm gonna be using this pry bar. I'm gonna be very gentle with it. You can also use a flathead screwdriver if you don't have that as well. So let's not waste any time. Let's get up close and let me show you guys how to start this assembly. The first thing we're gonna to want to remove is going to be this side panel here that covers your fuse panel on the driver's side. There's actually a little indentation right here. I believe it's actually meant to use your key because uh, the key actually fits fairly well in there. And I'm just working my way to the pop clip and it comes right out. So not too bad. Actually on here you can see that indentation I was talking about that's good for putting a pry bar. Uh, you could possibly use a key, but careful you don't break your key on that. Now the first screw you're going to be removing is going to be right here, this eight millimeter. Good. Put these screws somewhere that you won't lose them, that you know where they are. Now I'm going to show you the two screws that are going to be underneath this kick panel right here is one and another one is identical location on the opposite side. So let's get it up close. Here we're gonna see the one location on the left side next to your fuse panel. And the other one is going to be on the opposite side right there. Now, those are the two eight millimeter screws that we need to remove, so let's remove those. But just honorable mention, because we're gonna have to get to that. This piece right here and the identical piece on the other side right here also need to be removed. So let me show you how you're gonna to wanna to do this. You wanna be very gentle with this piece this thin plastic but pops out fairly easily see very easy i don't know if it's because i've done it many times before but it is fairly simple to remove just get in there pop it out comes right out now you're going to see a screw that's in there but you are not removing that screw that screw is simply um just to hold on the rest of the bezel surround so you are not removing that screw there you're leaving that in there's gonna be two clips that you're gonna pull down from after you remove the bottom screws to release this panel. All right, this next part, I did get those screws removed. The next part is a little tricky. You wanna be careful not to break anything. You're going to pull from the top here to get these pop clips out. But at the same time, you gotta keep in mind, there's a big indentation on the bottom here. I'm gonna show you afterwards where the airbag is. If actually, if you guys rewind to where I'm showing you the screw location, you see in the middle, there's a huge rectangle that's cut out. That's where your airbag is for your knees. Now, imagine a big rectangle. This is the airbag here in the center and the whole dashboard goes all the way around it. So you gotta watch out for the lip on the bottom. What you wanna do when you pull this top down is to undo the back so that you can get the other side out. So it's gonna be kinda like this. We're going to get that out. Now, if we can buy ourselves some room here on the bottom. Yep, kinda like this. I feel it going over the airbag. There we go. Pops right over, and now the other side will become somewhat easy. This one's always a little tricky. You can't really see what's going on, but I'm doing the same thing just like the other side. Come on. There we go. Always want to be careful with them. They're definitely tricky, but nonetheless, we got it. Next thing you want to do, your light switch panel here. Disconnect the wire. You're going to have two more wires down here. One is going to be for your light in the footwell, so you don't want to disconnect this. Come on. A little tricky. There we go, got that out. And then the OBD port. What I'm doing specifically, I have to actually reinstall this white wire right here I taped it all up, electrical tape. That wire is for my ethanol content analyzer. So my DS1 tune could actively read my ethanol content going directly into my high pressure fuel pumps and calibrate the tune based on the ethanol percentage. I had to disconnect this and put the original terminal back so that I could pass my inspection, which I got that taken care of, thankfully. So now I have to reinstall that. This big rectangle right here is what I was referring to that goes 
wrapped around your new airbag. Um, so what I got to do next is remove this OBD port. Now, I, wanna, I hope I can actually show you guys this because this is a bit tricky. There's a whole bunch of tabs on here. There's one tab here, one tab here, one tab here, and then two tabs on the side. So it's very tricky to get this out. I like to try to do it one step at a time. Um, so this one, let's say we'll pull this one and then we'll pull the middle and push the side. Actually don't really want to go. It's definitely tricky. And this is not something I suggest for a beginner to attempt. So let me get this out and I'll shoot a video of it after. Here's our up close of the OBD port. You can see the tabs here, one on the top. I wish this would focus. Let's see if we can get to focus. One on the top there, two on the sides. And the pin that I have to pull out is going to be this last pin on this side over here. So that pin has got to go. So let me swap this other uh, terminal back into this OBD. And let's get this reassembled. So I got the pin out, reinstalled the OBD into the holder of the kick panel here. We installed that light wire, reinstalled the wire for our light control panel here. One thing to note when going to reinstall this, there's going to be a clip. A clip that's right up there, right up there. And this kick panel has to slide into that. And it even has like an indentation for it. So that's one thing to note. The second thing to note, is of course this airbag uh, again trying to line everything up properly and get it in place i think it feel looks like we got into that clip on that side already and pushed it in um, these clips are a bit of a pain of course i want to get this side before anything and make sure you can feel on the back the back here that you're clearing it which i'm not clearing it so i'm gonna have to fidget around with it a little bit let me uh, get two hands on here so I can get this reinstalled, popped in, and we'll get these screws back installed. All right, so I did get the kick panel back on. I did have to realign the clip that's up there that it slides into. I had to push it forward more. Um, it actually popped in right around this airbag perfectly. I got the top ones back in, push those all in. Got this, the trim piece here, pop that one in. They're very simple, just clips. Let me grab the other one here. Where is it? Here it is. We're gonna pop this one back on. All it is is two clips and a peg that you have to line. Peg goes in there and two clips in the rest. So we just align it up till it feels good and push. So that's perfect. And now we just gotta reinstall our two screws on the bottom, one screw on the side. All right guys, final part of the reinstallation is going to be the plastic cover that covers the fuse panel on the driver's side. There's indentations here. If you've never taken this off before. Uh, you're gonna need to slide this in and then pop the clips, just like so. Good, so let's give her a start. Make sure everything's all good. This time it'll start up like that. And now let's get a close up in here just to make sure that what I was doing actually took effect, which was reinstalling that ethanol pin. And let's make sure that we can read on the Beatrice that it's giving us a live update of the ethanol content percentage. So that's pretty much it guys. We're all wrapped up here. Everything is working how it's supposed to. We removed and reinstalled the kick panel. That's all good. And uh, guys, if you enjoy the content, please give it a like if you want, even subscribe. Honestly, it doesn't matter to me. I'm here for you guys. You know, the more likes, the more subscribes, the more they'll push the videos on the algorithm, the more I'm incentivized to make the videos. Uh, if I make it and nobody watches it, you know, it's, it's 
yeah, it's all right. You know, I do it for you guys anyway. Even if one person gets something out of it, at the end of the day, it makes me happy. So you guys run the channel. You tell me what you want to see. If it's more how-to videos, if it's more car videos, if it's more day-to-day, -day, whatever it is, you let me know, and I'll catch you guys next time. All right, so we finally made it back to the garage. And what we're going to be doing, like I mentioned earlier, is we're going to be removing the kick panel on the driver's side, uh, the wheel, not the wheel well. So now what we're going to do, as I mentioned earlier, I'm going to show you guys how to disassemble um, the knee bolster. Pops into place. Let's get it on there. Come on. All right, guys, final part of the reinstallation. Fucking serious.